What is good everybody today we're back with brand new AEW action figure news for you're going to be going through some brand new figure images that we dropped and they're actually in stock and it's un upsetting kind of because they didn't post up every single image of them which is odd because they are in stock so it's kind of like a mixed bag right you kind of I don't know they, they they are in stock besides one figure and we'll get into that and these should be coming into the door pretty soon and we should have these in hand within the week or maybe within the next week or so and we can do reviews on AEW Unmatched series number nine which is what we're going to be talking about today, man. But let's start things off with the first figure in the set. We're going to be breaking down everything that you see here. And the first figure is going to be Unmatched Series 9 Jeff Hardy. Now, this is a figure that a lot of people have been waiting on. Jeff Hardy, one of my favorites of all time. Definitely been waiting on this AEW figure. I am very excited for this for a multitude of reasons. I do have my worries about each thing. And we're going to, of course, break down all the lore, of course, as we get into it. But we do have Jeff Hardy here. His first AEW figure that we are seeing from Jazzwares here in in Unmatched Series 9. We do have an Unrivaled figure also coming soon in Unrivaled 15, I think, and that's the next wave in AEW Unrivaled. You know, we did have Unrivaled 14 not too long ago, so Unrivaled 15 should be hitting relatively soon, which would be nice, but we don't have a look at that figure yet. We do have this one, though, and this one looks to be pretty damn solid, if you ask me. I like the way this is looking here. The head sculpt, it is going to be a man bun head sculpt. This is actually something we never saw from Mattel out of everything. We never saw a man bun head sculpt for for Jeff Hardy from Mattel in his run from the time he returned at WrestleMania 33 to his departure to AEW. Never saw a man bun head sculpt, so that is something that is different here. And I think you could possibly put some of these on your Mattel figures. Of course, we're going to have to see how the head sculpts compare in terms of size. Maybe they're a little bit too big. I hope not. I think that's something, that's probably my biggest disappointment in the AEW figure line is that they started off so strong in the scale department with WWE and their elites and the ultimates. And then it's like, as time has went on, they've kind of shifted away from that and the scale has gotten out of whack. Of course, some figures still do scale together, but some of them do not scale together, and I think that is kind of a worry of a lot of people. But this figure looks good. I like the straight expression. I like the screaming expression. It does look good. It is going to include all of his tattoos from the neck to his waist, which is something that I think is very excellent. We did see that a couple times from Mattel, but it was always shirtless. We never got sleeveless and shirtless Jeff Hardy, which is another different thing. And they have a lot of details here. He has his rubber wristbands on. You have a rubber band on the right arm and the left arm, which I think is cool. It looks like it includes every single tattoo detail including around his neck and shoulder area which is new and he did add to his right sleeve so all of that is covered here he also comes with his chair that has that artwork on it which is where he debuted in AEW and it looks like they're using the Jericho torso here which I don't like and this is a brand new crotch and leg mold which I'm excited to see when we get in hand but you know it, it, looking at it here it looks really strong I'm excited for it as a huge Jeff Hardy guy and as a fan of the guy I'm much looking forward to what this figure is it even looks like it has shin cut from this perspective that I'm seeing this figure so hopefully we get more Jeffs in the future I would love to see a supreme Jeff Hardy not gonna hold my breath on that but I am excited for this figure and we'll have to see when we get it in hand but Jeff Hardy is the first figure in the line and the next one that we have is going to be Brian Danielson. Now, this figure got a lot of uh, slack online. A lot of people saying, you know, that head sculpt looks horrible. But I will say, from this angle, it's kind of difficult to tell. Like, is it the best expression ever? No, and it does look like his mouth kind of shifted a little. But I can't really tell from this. I mean, you're talking about a figure that's in package. And not only is it in packaging and a, a little ways away, it's not right up to the camera. It's also slightly tilted. And so, all those different things kind of play a role, I think. Now, Brian Danielson, they do make his tour so too big and in doing so his head sculpt's too big so that's probably going to be the case here but outside of that I still love this man you get the khaki joggers in there I love the on cloud shoes sculpt here doesn't have the logos but those are actual on clouds sculpted into the line which I think is hilarious so we are going to have some on clouds in the AEW unmatched line which is pretty cool I don't own a pair of those or anything like that but it's still cool to see official shoes like that sculpted into the line but I like the white tee it's a cool promo gear for Brian Danielson and you could put a hundred different people in khaki pants, man. I mean, I, I believe that we're going to be able to get multiples of this figure, and that'll be fun for fix-ups and all those things like that. So I can't wait for that. That is definitely going to be something to do with these figures. And that's probably my favorite thing about the AEW figure line is the interchangeability and how good they feel in hand. I know these pants are going to be great, and you know I love a good promo gear, street attire, 
for my wrestling action figure. So this Brian Danielson, I'm all for. I, I, I'm going to wait on the head sculpt, and even if it's trash, even if it's trash head sculpt, we have a few different Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson head sculpts you could put on there to really fix it up, but hopefully this figure checks out. It looks like it's going to be hella articulated, and maybe you can even do a shoe swap, and I can put myself in these khaki joggers. We'll have to see, but that is the next figure in the way with Brian Danielson. Those are probably my favorite two in the line, but let's get into the next figure, which is going to be John Moxley, and this Mox figure looks pretty damn good. I'm liking this head sculpt. This looks to be a brand new head sculpt. I like how pissed off he looks. I like the hair sculpt. I like the beard. You're getting the AEW world title. I love the camo pants. This is a very solid Moxley figure. The only thing is, is it going to be the same leg mold? Is it going to be very loose like his other figures have been? That is going to be the ultimate question. I think they have made his figures too big. Ever since the beginning, they're just way too tall, so I would like to see that change. But he did lose a little bit of weight there. You know, he leaned out a little bit. Maybe they did change the torso. We'll have to see about that. I'm not going to hold my breath, but he does have the BCC hoodie on, which I think is cool, and it looks like it even has the tassels coming down from the hood, which I think is also awesome, but I am most definitely going to be copying this Mox figure. I love this head sculpt. I think we're going to be able to fix him up nice, put that head sculpt on other Moxes, maybe even an Ultimate Edition or different things like that, but this is a great attire for Moxley as well, and I like the accessories he gets. The, any cloth goods are great, even if it is going to stain, which I would love for them to fix that. Of course, that's one of the bigger issues that people always think of, but uh, the figure looks good nonetheless, and we'll have to see if it has staining once it's removed out of the packaging. If, if it doesn't have staining, that uh, it wouldn't be the biggest deal to do a torso swap because we have so many different moxes, but that's just something that you cannot have in your figure line, man. I think that should be their, their first priority. I would say scale is a number one priority over the, the staining, in my personal opinion, but the next thing would have to be the staining issue. But the mox looks good. I am still happy for the mox and excited to get it in here. It's way better than a damn rubber jacket. I'll take a cloth goods hoodie every single damn day of the week, so we'll do that. But he also has the AEW world title in there, which is also cool, but that is our first three figures in the set. We also have a look at Cesaro or Claudio Castelloni here, and we have the regular version in the black and red with the long sleeve black shirt, which we talked about already with the staining and all those different things. You know, I will say the Chase variant I think is a better figure. I like the camo jacket. That's a very sweet camo jacket. I like the gray attire with the white boots much better than the black and red. Certainly better. The Chase is certainly better here, so that's definitely one that I'm going to try to track down. Hopefully that'll be something that is relatively simple to do, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that one either. Just a lot of holding the breath here, man. Going to be taking a lot of puffs, I guess, but he also comes with the long sleeve hoodie jacket or I don't think this is a hoodie, but it is a jacket that has the, you know, the Combat Club logo on there, which is awesome. And then the other one is going to have the camouflage in there, and it reminds me a lot of AJ Styles' entrance hoodie, but it is a jacket again, and it ties into the gear. So the gray gear with the camo tying into the camo jacket looks really sweet, and the boots look sweet. So I'm excited for these. Not my favorite head sculpts of all time, but I think they definitely have likeness to, to Claudio, which is good, but we will not know until we get it in hand. I never unboxed the Ring of Honor Claudio, never reviewed that on the channel. I have two, of, and they're both still in the shipper, so I definitely need to get on that. So I, I still don't have a Claudio in my collection whatsoever, so that'll be nice. But the final member of the BCC that we have in this wave is going to be Wheeler Yuta. And Wheeler Yuta looks awesome. I love the championship, of course. I love the, the bloody gear that we're getting here. I think the boots look pretty solid. The head sculpt looks solid. It does look to be a brand new head sculpt. He's slightly pissed off right there. And it looks good. I like the BCC shirt. We're getting, you know, a full faction pretty much here in this entire wave, which is also awesome. But the white and bl the white and red blood looks amazing. I think that's a pretty creative gear. It looks bloodstained. It's got, you know, the logos in there. Pretty damn clean. I like that. I like this much better than his first go around in the blood and guts. And maybe, I mean, hell, it'd be cool to do a torso swap with the blood and guts. And then it looks like, you know, his tights are all bloody. He's all bloody. And that would be a really cool fix up that you could do possibly. And then you would have that original gear with the non-bloody torso and stuff. So that would be pretty cool. That'd be maybe something that you look into. But Wheeler Yuta is looking good here in Unmatched Series number nine. And then we also have Jamie Hayter, who is getting her second figure or third or fourth, I guess you could say, if you include the Shop AEW or the, you know, that UK exclusive. Then you had that Chase with the jacket. This is going to be another figure for her. Championship looks good. She looks good here. I don't know how quite I feel about the head sculpt. But again, all these head sculpts are kind of suspect. From this distance, I think all the head sculpts are kind of suspect. They're kind of difficult to, to understand or judge here. But but I will say that her first go around, her figure was really good. So I'm sure that this one is going to follow the same exact pattern there. And hopefully this figure will kick all the ass that her first figure did. And so we will have to be the judges of that in our comparison shot. I don't know if I'm going to review this entire wave in its entirety or if I'll break it up. Maybe do, you know, Jeff Hardy in a character. And then maybe you could do the Blackpool Combat Club as a, as a thing there. 
I don't know. I may, I might do it. I don't know. We'll figure that out. We'll have to see exactly how that all turns out. But that is our Jamie Hater figure. And then the last figure that we have, man, is going to be the other chase in the set, which I know a lot of people are moaning and groaning. We have Alex Reynolds here, one of 5,000. This figure, I feel like, has been pushed and moved in all different directions, but we do have another member of Dark Order here. He does have the trench coat, which is rubber, which is trash, but I do like the gear. I do like the head sculpts for the most part. They're not my favorite of all time, but I do like them. You got the chase there, and a lot of people upset, much like the bunny, much like these other chases that we're seeing that are, I don't know, man, like, ah, God, I just have such a mixed feeling about this right here because they're so difficult to obtain, but then if they made them in the regular line and then you have guys like shelf warming on pegs. So I understand both sides of it completely because if you were to put this guy in the main line or, you know, a character, many characters similar to Alex Reynolds, you put them at main retail and they just sit there on shelves forever and that can hurt you. But also, if you put it in the 1 of 5,000, I feel like you're hurting the people that really care about, you know, the product and really do want to search it out and want these figures. You're making that difficult to obtain. So you kind of have to, you know, you have both sides there. It's definitely, certainly, you know, something that you have to look at both ways. But the gear looks good. I like this figure. I'm definitely going to be tracking this down to the best of my ability and trying to get two of these. One to unbox, one to keep men on card. But that is our full AEW and Match Series number nine. And I would love to know what you guys think of it. I really like the Jeff Hardy, man. I really do like the Jeff Hardy. I'm excited for it. I don't know how I feel about this torso selection with with uh, with the Chris Jericho. That's my main concern with this figure. But again, you can't really judge it until you get it in hand. You know, you can make all the speculation you want. I've get I've gotten plenty of figures that I was worried about that turned out awesome, and I've gotten plenty of figures that looked amazing and turned out to be trash. You know, or they didn't live up to expectations. You know, you look at a guy like the Luchasaurus figure, you look at guys like that, those are certain examples of that. So, you know, anything can happen, anything can happen, but hopefully we'll have these within the week and we will be able to break them down and see exactly what we're getting with AEW and Match 9. You guys can make your decisions for yourselves. But I think all of these are in stock besides Jeff Hardy. Every single one of these figures is in stock. So if you guys are interested in these, you want to grab these, you can go over to Ringside Collectibles, use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. You can grab AEW and Match Series number 9 besides Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy is on back order, I think, so that will be something that you have to deal with there, but I should have these again within the week, and we can get, you know, all those reviews in there and find out what exactly everything looks like, but nonetheless, man, that is going to pretty much wrap up the video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know all of your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. Huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel, man. Love you guys. Appreciate every single one of you guys so very much for all of your continued support. You guys are unbelievable. I appreciate every single one of you, man. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one and I will catch you later.